The only thing I want you to worry about is this. The golden snitch. Just wait. It's wicked fast and damn near impossible to see. You catch this, and we win. The Golden Snitch is one of the most iconic objects from the vast Harry Potter series. We were introduced to it in the very first book as part of the sport Quidditch. While making my video on everything you need to know about Quidditch, I decided that the Snitch deserved its own video. Rowling released information on the object in the book Quidditch Through the Ages. While rereading it, I realized how interesting this chapter of the book is. So in this video, I'm going to go through that chapter as I explain the origins of the Golden Snitch. The Golden Snitch was the last big thing to be added to the game Quidditch. The balls, pitch, and positions had already been set in place, although many of these had different names than the ones that we know today. The sport had grown in popularity very much, and it was becoming more and more organized with crowds gathering to watch the matches. But our story here is not about Quidditch. It's actually about another sport called Snidget Hunting. It too grew in popularity around the same time that Quidditch did, although a little bit earlier. This is where the creation of the Snitch started. In the sport Snidget Hunting, the Snidget is a completely round and fat bird with red eyes. It's covered in golden feathers and has a long beak. It has rotational wings that let the Snidget move in any direction with remarkable agility and speed. They were common in Northern Europe, and they're difficult to detect by muggles because of their speed and aptitude at hiding. Because they were so small and had such talent avoiding predators, it was very prestigious for a witch or wizard to catch one of them. Those that did were oftentimes presented with a big bag of gold. Hunters that participated in the sport of snidget hunting rode on broomsticks and used nets, wands, and oftentimes their bare hands to catch them. When they were caught, the hunters would often crush the snidget in their hand, killing it. Because the creatures were so elusive, much of the sport went on during the day, as they would be too hard to find at night. This led to many muggle sightings of witches and wizards on broomsticks. The council in power at the time tried to stop and take control of it, but they were unable to do this due to the sport's popularity. But looking more closely, it appears that the council itself saw little wrong with it. Now how does this relate to Quidditch? Well, the two sports finally crossed paths in 1269 at a match that was heavily attended by spectators. One of the spectators was Barbarus Bragg, who was the chief of the wizard council. He brought a caged snidget to the match and told the assembled players that he would award 150 galleons to the player who caught it during the course of the game. This led to the players rising as one into the air, ignoring the quaffle and dodging the bludgers. Both keepers also abandoned the goals and joined the hunt. The poor little snidget shot up and down the pitch, seeking a means of escape, but wizards and witches in the crowd forced it back with repelling spells. A witch named Madame Rabnet, who hated snidget hunting and whose temper was going up, ran onto the pitch and yelled at Bragg, Chief Bragg. This is not sport. Let the Snidget go free, and let us watch the noble game of Quidditch, which we have all come to see. Bragg responded by laughing in her face and throwing the empty birdcage at her. Ravnit, now even more angry and upset, saw a chance to do right by the Snidget when it flew her way. She used a summoning charm, and it shot toward her. She stuffed it in the front of her robes as she ran for it. They caught her, but not before she released the Snidget. Bragg was furious and had to have his advisors calm him down. He ended up fining Rabnit 10 galleons for disrupting the game, which at the time was a lot of money. While well, Rabnit might have saved that snidget, which actually led to her losing her house when she couldn't pay the 10 galleons, she couldn't save all of the snidgets that were now becoming part of the sport. Bragg's idea had forever changed the nature of Quidditch. Golden Snidgets were soon being released during all Quidditch matches. The position of the Hunter, which would later be known as Seeker, was created with one player on each team. They had the sole task of catching the bird. When the bird was caught and killed, the game was over, and the Hunter's team was awarded an extra 150 galleons promised by Chief Bragg. The crowd worked together to keep the Snidget on the pitch by using repelling spells. 
This went on for many years, but at the middle of the following century, Golden Snidget numbers had fallen so low that the Wizards Council, now headed by the considerably more enlightened Alfida Clag, made the Golden Snidget a protected species, outlawing both its killing and its use in Quidditch games. They started a safe house where they had the preservation of the creatures. They named it the Modesty Rabnut Snidget Reservation, named after Madame Rabnut, the first person to ever take a stand in defense of these birds. People were frantic to find a substitute for the creatures that were now off limits. People were desperate for matches to resume and were fearful that Quidditch, as they knew it, was gone forever. The invention of the Golden Snitch came to the rescue, however. The creation was made by a wizard named Bowman Wright of Godric's Hollow. While Quidditch teams all over the country tried to find bird substitutes for the Snidget, Wright, who was a skilled metal charmer, set himself to the task of creating a ball that mimicked the behavior and flight patterns of the Snidget. His invention worked perfectly. There were orders from all over the country. When he died, he left behind many rolls of parchment with those orders. The Golden Snitch, as Bowman called his invention, was a walnut-sized ball, exactly the weight of a Snidget. It had the same wings and rotational joints, enabling it to change direction with the lightning speed of its living model. Unlike the Snidget, however, the Snitch had been bewitched to remain within the boundaries of the field. The introduction of the Golden Snitch is said to have finished the process of creating this amazing sport. After this invention, Quidditch had truly been born. Thanks so much for watching, guys. You can follow me on social media. Links for that will be in the description. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be listed on my next video, plus a bunch of other rewards, check out my Patreon, which is linked down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you press that subscribe button to help grow the channel. Again, thank you so much for watching, and look out for more great videos on the way.